This video will cover how to set up a serial connection to our various product families and how to use the CLI once the serial connection is established. The CLI serial interface is used to troubleshoot our products by displaying the post details and the operating status of the radio. It can also be used to issue CLI commands to change various configurations. The CLI can be accessed through the use of a terminal emulation program such as HyperTerminal or PuTTY via the supplied RS-232 cable. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get started on the AP side first. Now, the AP4700 and the AP8800 product line both have the RS-232 DB9 connection in the back. As you can kind of see here, I'm going to show a picture of the AP8000. Uh, 800 here in a little bit but where they do differ is going to be the serial settings themselves now in 4700 we have the board rate is 9600 data bits is 8 stop bits is 1 and the parity is none flow control is none as well now on the AP8800 side you can see the settings are fairly similar but it's only the baud rate it's uh, 115 200 that's different everything else is the same data bits is 8 stop bits is 1 parity and flow control both none and as you can also see right here here is the serial port on the AP8800 radio unfortunately the AP8100 does not have a serial port so um, we just do troubleshooting the old-fashioned way. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the after radios. Uh, Proxim point to point QB11, QB8100, 8200 series, and the point to multipoint, the MP11 and the MP8100, 8200 radios use an RJ11 to DB9 connector. As you can see down here. Uh, the RJ11 is down here, and then, of course, the DB9 is up here. We call it a dongle, all right? As with the APs, there is a difference in the serial settings between the model numbers, meaning uh, between the MP11, QB11, and the uh, MP and QB8000 family. These are different, just like between the AP4000 and the AP8000. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start looking at the QB MP.11 family. So as you can see, the serial connection settings are identical to the AP4700 radios. Uh, serial board is 9600, data bits is 8, stop bits is 1, parity is none, and flow control is none as well. Now, uh, one point I do have to point out is... Depending on the radio that you have, the serial connection is going to be at a different location. So in our original radios, where you could see the connectors in the back, here is your Ethernet, and right here, here is your serial. And the newer radios, the serial port is actually right over here. So this is your Ethernet port, and this is going to be your serial port. Um, other than that, um, they operate the exact same way. Okay, so last but not least, we're going to go ahead and cover the QBMP8000 uh, family, the 8100, the 8200. Uh, just like the AP8000s, uh, 800, the serial baud rate is uh, 115200. Uh, the data bits is 8, stop bits is 1, both parity and flow control are none. Now, the serial port is actually located right over here. So if you have a radio like this one is the connectorized version, you can see you have your connectors down here. Or if you have the one with the built-in antenna, it'll still be all the way up here. So when you kind of look at it face up, it's going to be the one on the left. So you just plug it in and uh, it's still going to uh, provide all the information that you need. Okay, so now it's time to see what happens during the serial uh, operation of the radio. Okay, so for right now, I am in HyperTerminal, and uh, we're going to create a new one. I clicked on File, Configure, and then we're going to go ahead and type in the name and click OK, whatever com you're using, and here are our bot. Okay, so we're going to select that, uh, 115200. I'm using a 8100 radio. Our flow control is none, so data bits is 8, parity is none, stop bits is 1, and flow control is none. Click Apply and OK. So now let's go ahead and power up our radio. All right, so this is what we want to see, all of this over here. This is our post. 
if any of this right here failed, please contact Proxim Technical Support as the radio will need to be replaced. If you see this as, as all pass, the only thing we need to do now is just wait until the radio just boots up properly. Now, the process could take about a minute or so. So it's going to keep on uh, doing whatever it's going to do. And, and what we're looking for is the username and password prompt. Okay, so once we see the prompt, then that means the radio has booted up completely. If it gets stuck around here, no matter what you do, either a reset or reload, it continuously just stuck over here. Please contact technical support and we're going to go ahead and assist you. If this comes up to something different where it's going to ask you for a whole bunch of information boot p and then the prompt is bootloader that means that the radio has no firmware you put in a forced reload state um, we have documentation in the manual um, on the proxim support site myproxim.com that's going to help you out with uh, how to reload the firmware back in the radio so in this case we're going to go ahead and type in admin and then public and now it's going to dump us to the main site of the radio and from here uh, we should be able to do things like show IP address or do any other type of configuration now for that uh, please refer to the reference manual that has all of the CLI commands from there uh, it's a totally different topic and uh, once again proxim uh, technical support will be more than happy to answer uh, the questions that you have to learn more about proxim wireless and our solutions please visit us at proxim.com or follow us at twitter at proxim